Did you get to hear the music being played at the beginning? Yeah, they, they played the intro and uh, I hear the music and I felt like it was 1996 all over again. And every one of the our guys was like, oh my God, I'm freaking out. I'm about to cry. I'm getting chills. Like we all felt it in unison. We all kind of looked at each other and we were like, we're at the ECW arena. You're hearing the music. We know we're going out there. And it's like, what year is this? <laughs> it's like, ECW will never, ever die. We're never going to die. We might die physically, but that company is never going to die, ever. And I don't want it to. My week started last week when I, uh, Halloween, it was Halloween. Um, We went up to the Rhode Island Comic Con convention. And I was there from that Thursday to Sunday night. That was a long one. That was like a four day trip. And it was a great turnout. Thanks to everybody who stopped by my table. I have to say that. Um, got to spend the weekend with Betty, which is always a pleasure. Uh, Bubba and Devon um, were just, you know, good dudes. My brothers. It was, it was just a great time. And uh, thanks to uh, Signed by Superstars for bringing me into that one. Um, it was a long one, but it was fun. You know, we had a really good time. Got to go to dinner, uh, with, um, Bubba Devon, me, Betty, Matt Hardy, um, a couple times hung out with him and, uh, you know, it was, it was a lot of work. The hours were very long, but we got to hang out afterwards and I don't get to see Bubba and Devon that much. So that was a, a, a treat for me to spend, you know, that time with them. So it was, it was a good time. Um, but even prior to that, let's go back, what, two, three weeks, something like that. Yeah. I was sitting at home. I don't even know what day it was. Um, I have all the text messages to prove. It was a Wednesday. It was, or we had just recorded. Did we? We had just recorded. Yeah. Trying to see on here. I should have had this pulled up because I've gotten so many text messages since. This all came, uh, came up. Um, I was sitting at home. It was nine o'clock at night. Here's it. Here it is. Excuse me. Um, nine o'clock at night on Thursday, October seventeenth, and eight fifty-four p.m. is when <laughs> the first text came in. But my phone rang first. And it's, it's a joke amongst all the workers. Like when area code 203 pops up on your phone and you, you don't know the number, everybody's always like, oh, what's WWE calling us? Uh, Stanford, Connecticut, burr, burr, burr. you know what I mean? Is it, we all, you know, we always pop nine times out of 10. It's always a telemarketer or <laughs> wrong number or something like that. So when I saw my phone ring, I said, hey. <laughs> I was by myself. I just popped myself. I was like, oh. Must be WWE calling for something. Well, guess what? That time it was WWE. So uh, John Coon, who I knew back in 2006 with the fake EC dub, uh, he's t- talent relations. Such a nice man. I liked him back in 2006. Always got along with him. A perfect gentleman. Very sweet. It was him. And he had called. He had got my number from Brian Myers, who is a friend of mine. We all know that. And Uh, We're going to put the actual text messages up when we uh, do the YouTube so I don't get any haters telling me I'm lying or I'm fabricating the truth. Um, But uh, initially they had contacted me because they were working, NXT was working the ECW arena in a couple weeks and he wanted to run something by me. And I was being very cautious. I'm like, this is a rib. Who's ribbing me? Who, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it wasn't a rib. And But I had asked, what is this in reference to? And then he started explaining everything you can see in these text messages. Um, and I, I guess I should read it because we're on, you know, for people listening on iHeart. Um, the initial text message was, hi, Francine. This is John Coon from WWE Talent Relations. We crossed paths back in 2006 when I was a referee for the relaunch of ECW. I have something I want to run by you if you have a minute. I wrote, hi, John. Hope all is well. May I ask what this is in reference to? And I remembered exactly who John was. 
He said on Wednesday, November 3rd, NXT will be running a show at the ECW Arena. We'd like to know if you would be available to be a special guest referee for one of the matches. It would be with NXT talent uh, Jada Parker and Lola Vice. And then he writes the compensation will be blah, blah, blah. I wrote back, really, why me? Because at this point, he didn't say anything about the ECW connection. He just said it would be at the ECW arena. So I was curious, like, why me on an NXT show? It didn't make any sense. Um, I also said November 3rd is a Sunday, not a Wednesday. He said, sorry, it's Wednesday, November 6th at the ECW arena. He said, we want this to be kind of a celebration of ECW and a crossover with NXT. The writers came up with some ideas on how to do that, and your name came up. Then he says, we also have, and he he gives me a list of names confirmed, and he's reaching out to a few more. Then he puts more names. I'm not going to mention because some people came through and some people didn't. Um, He said... um, he left them messages and I said, okay, I have to talk to my husband, blah, blah, blah. May I contact you tomorrow? Haven't refed in years. I'll need to buy a ref outfit. Not thinking at the time of my stomach and the problems that I've been encountering. Right. So he said, absolutely. Call me or text anytime. It should be a really fun show. Uh, I said, okay, let me talk to him. I appreciate you guys thinking of me. I'll be in touch. I then talked to my husband and he's like, did you not forget about the five surgeries that you've had on your abdominals? And I was like, well, yeah. And he's like, do you really think that you can be quick enough with the way these girls work? Because these girls are good. Let me just tell you, these girls can work, right? He's like, do you think you can get down and, you know, make the false finishes and then run around? We didn't know what kind of match it was. It ended up being a hardcore match and all this stuff. And I was like, you know what? For me now, because my core is so weak, just lifting myself up, getting into the ring is slow. And we've talked about this before when I do the yes. reunion shows and stuff, how we're all like a little bit slower than we were before. So I was just like, well... I guess I'm not going to be able to do it. So I contacted John the next day and I told him, here's my problem. And I went on to explain what I had to my stomach, blah, blah, blah. Um, He wrote, good morning. No problem. We can do something different. Let me talk to creative and get back to you. Then I pitched an idea about me being a timekeeper, guest timekeeper. And I thought of a spot that I can do with, with one of the guys on the card. He said, thanks for the suggestion. He'll send it to creative. Um, Then I get a text the following Tuesday. Did Johnny Russo get with you about tomorrow? This is the night before. I hadn't heard anything for like two weeks. So I'm kind of like sitting there thinking, well, I'm booked, I think. But I have no idea what I'm doing. At this time, I went to Rhode Island Comic Con for the four days. And I talked and I talked and I talked and I lost my voice. So on Tuesday, they sent me a script to be like a backstage interviewer. And I go, oh, oh, man, I can't do this either. My Uh. voice is shot, right? Because it was bad. It was bad. And he's like, did did, uh, Johnny Russo get with you about tomorrow? And then how cute. He sends me directions to the 2300 arena. <laughs> it's horrible. You get there like, with your oh. eyes closed. <laughs> I said, okay. Um, I said, I haven't heard from him. I wasn't contacted since last week. I don't know anything about tomorrow. This is at nine o'clock the night before the arena. So he goes, I'll reach out to them now. I'm sorry about that. I said, no worries. He writes, Johnny's supposed to reach out to you. If you can arrive around one o'clock tomorrow, that would be great. Please text me when you arrive and I'll meet you. So I had talked to Guido because I, I'm a horrible driver. Everyone who knows me knows that I am the shits at driving. I can admit that. I do hate driving, especially at night. I can't really see that well at night. I'm not a good driver. So I didn't want to drive alone. So I contact Guido. No problem. Meet me at exit, blah, blah, blah. We'll, we'll get it done. So I was like, okay, so his call time was at noon. So we were going to be at 11. So I was already getting there super early, which was fine. Johnny Russo, who is a very nice man, got to meet him, lovely person. He calls me at 10 o'clock or texts me at 10 o'clock, right? With the script 
for the backstage stuff. And I type back, Johnny, <laughs> I am so embarrassed to say this. I have no voice. Like I don't have a voice and it, it just wasn't going to work. And I, you know, and you'll see the text messages, but I literally say to them, if you want to pull me off the show, I totally understand. Like no heat because this is on me. Like I can't, I can't work really what they, the way they want me to, I can't talk. So what am I going to do? You know, I, I have no idea. And a couple of the boys were like, you can sit in the front row. That's what they do with a lot of the legends. They just put them in the front row. I said, well, are they, you know, do they really want to pay me the same amount to sit? In the I don't know. So I tell him and he says, um, uh, hold on. Now I have to go to Johnny's messages. Oh, oh and, and, uh, I'm sorry. Prior to this, they make me cut a promo, a 30 second promo, put it on socials. And, and that's how I announced that I was going to be at the show. At that point is when it first happened, like the two, three weeks ago, whatever it was. So I had my voice. I was fine. I was like, okay, I'm going to do something. This is great. Everybody saw the promo. They retweeted right. it. It was, it was good. You know, it was yeah, a good that was deal. super successful. That was awesome. Yeah, it, it was really good. Um, they were like, do you want us to write something for you? And I was like, no, I said, I, I could do 30 seconds by myself. That's good. So I, I, I said, do you still want me to come even though I can't talk? This is what I'm telling them. And he's like, we'll figure something out tomorrow. Let's see how you are in the morning and go from there. We could have you sitting in the crowd or being a timekeeper. That's what he wrote back. We'll make it work. Don't worry. So I did offer to stay home. But at that point, they had put out the opening and they put me in the opening of the yeah. show. I guess it was too late to pull me. Um, I don't know. Or they they thought I should be there, which, you know, I, I was appreciative of that. So um, when I got to the building, it was 1120 or my call time was one. So super duper early. Um, me and Guido pull up. John, we text John, John comes out, exchange pleasantries, and there's a camera crew and they video um, Guido and I going into the building. I'm trying to save my voice. So Guido's doing all the talking and I'm just pulling my bag behind him and they, they videotape us going inside and everything. And the arena has changed so much you know, since we've worked there before. So as soon as we went in from the back, hair and makeup took up the whole back of the, the, uh, the arena. So I'm looking around, I'm the only girl there so far. So I said, can I jump in the makeup chair and get it over <laughs> with? Because there were like, there was a 10 girl thing. There was a uh, tag team. There, there were so many women there. Yeah. And I said, I don't want to have to like fight for a spot later. No one's here. So I went up to hair and makeup and I was like, would you ladies mind like starting a couple minutes early? And they were so accommodating. Oh no, sweetheart, sit in the chair. It's great. I got to know them. We, you know, exchange pleasantries. And as I'm sitting there, Shawn Michaels walks in and I was like, I have to say hi to him. He's the head honcho and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Such a nice exchange exchange between him and I, um, he said, we, we appreciate you coming today. Thank you for being here. And I said, thank you for including me in this weird voice. And he's looking at me like, Oh, okay. I don't know if he got the memo that my voice was shot. Um, but I did get to see him later on and I was telling him, you know, we were in Japan together and he kind of looked at me and goes, Oh yeah, I remember. And I'm thinking, no, you don't. <laughs> I don't think you do. Um, but I did say to him, I, I apologize for my voice being like this. And his response was, you can just stand there and look pretty. And the 19 year old in me squealed. Because <laughs> Sean, <laughs> I loved Sean when I was 19. So I was squealing. Um, but I, I, you know, I, they, they, my point was they were just so accommodating to me. So I had to mention all of this because looking back at socials now and seeing like some of the old school fans mad and, you know, saying, well, they could have did something more with you than just stuck you in the crowd. Yes, they could have, but it was me who couldn't do it. So I, I just wanted to make that perfectly clear. 
Would I have liked to have done more? Of course. You know, I would have loved to have had an entrance and walked to the ring and did something. It just wasn't in the cards for me. But just being included was enough for me. Like, I didn't need any more than that. You know, it was it was fun. I got to meet so many great people. The girls were so nice. Uh, some of them had on ECW attire, which I thought was adorable. And I'm like, you weren't even born when we were around. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like, I was telling them, you know, I, I started in this building like 31 years ago. And they were like, wow. You know, they, they were very, very, um, they seemed appreciative that I was there, but they were also very nice. I didn't see any catty you know, with, with the NXT roster, like everybody seemed to get along uh, and they can work their asses off. The talent is amazing there um, and they all have really good attitudes. So it was very, very nice to um, just talk to some of them and get to know them a little bit. Um, I followed, um, I noticed some of them were following me on social. So I followed a couple of them back and who knows? I mean, it's, it's, you never know where you're going to see each other down the road. So it was, it was really nice to, um, to watch how they put the show together. Um, you know, there was one promo where, um, it was the five girls, they were in front of a couch. It was the baby face team. Um, and I was sitting right, you couldn't see me, but I was watching them shoot these promos the whole time. And it was giving me flashbacks to when we were downstairs and we were shooting our promos. Granted, it was four in the morning, but that's a different story <laughs> altogether. Um, but just the way that they, you know, put the show together and everyone from production to office to the talent, like everyone was really, really um, just seemed happy that the legends of ECW were there. Very, very nice crew. Nice. Um, so I couldn't say enough about it. Now it was a very long day. I was extremely tired by the end of it because, you know, getting there at 20 after 11, um, I think I got home at 11, 10 30, 11. So it was, yeah, it was a lot. It was a, almost a 12 hour day when you're there, a lot of sitting around, a lot of waiting. Plus I did not eat for 36 hours. I was fasting. One, because I didn't want my stomach to be super weird and super bloated from, you know, the foods that they had, because they had a, a beautiful catering um, offering for, for the guys and the girls there. Um, and number two, you never want to go to the bathroom at the ECW. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I decided I'm not going to eat. So I didn't eat for like the 36 hours. I was just sipping my water and, um, you know, just hanging out. but. I, I'm really glad that I got to do it and um, my nerves were bad leading up to it, but it all worked out in the end. It always works out in the end. Like my husband says, it's just, there I am. Yeah. Are we allowed to show this? I don't know. I mean, are you going to do your gimmick on it? <laughs> oh, you missed them announce me. What the hell's wrong with you? Started a nice little ECW chant. I was, see, I thought my name was going to be announced in the building. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there. They, first of all, they, they walked me out. It was pitch dark. I didn't know what section I was in, right? They just led me to this empty seat. Um, and I'm waiting because usually like on the pay-per-views, I, I thought that they announced in the buildings, but they don't do that. They don't announce mm -hmm. you. They only announce you with the, um, announced team for TV. Sorry. That's all right. Yeah. And I didn't know that. So the, for, um, the cameraman's in front of me and he's letting me know, okay, you got a minute to come back from commercial. You have 30 seconds. And so then he points to me. And I'm sitting there waiting for my name. And he's like, stand up. And I go, what? <laughs> he goes, stand up. I go, now? He goes, yes. So I stood up and didn't hear it. So I said, well, what do I do? I said, I'll start an EC dub chant. <laughs> Just start a chant. <laughs> know what to do. Because <laughs> I'm waiting for my name to be called. And it was never called. 
Um, but I, I was told they did put me on the Titan Tron or whatever they call it these days. And um, right. I got to watch the match up close and personal, which was a lot of fun. And uh, that was basically it. You know, pretty easy work, long day, but easy work for me. And again, just happy to be there, happy to be included. Um, and met a lot of good people. Well, that's great. Yeah. I have some questions if, if it's oh, time to open up the floor a little bit. Absolutely. So my first question would be about the setup for the arena itself. Because obviously, you know, I've been there for the, the indie shows that have taken over the arena now and have done shows since. I got to think that WWE has to expand a little bit more than those. So how did they cram all of their sets, you know, placement and their production equipment? How did they cram all that into that arena? I was told that it was 700 seats. So they downsized the seats because usually you can fit. What, what do they fit like? 12, 1500. Yeah, I thought it was close like to 1500. I think there were only 700 seats set up, 700 chairs. I could be wrong. Same. That's what I was told. But you couldn't get a good gauge from the, the TV how many seats there it were. It looked beautiful on television. Oh, yeah, it looked fantastic. Looked you just couldn't get a gauge on seats. Um, you know, from, from the way the ramp was set up. Now, I, I will say I was hoping it was going to be the old school ECW bricks. That's what I thought would have been cool with the ECW logo on the top, but um, I don't know if that's readily available to use. Um, I'm sure they have it because I know they did. Remember, they had they did it similar. at the Fan Fest yeah. stuff for WrestleMania. Yeah, I I just thought you know maybe that I, I like what they did. I thought it looked good. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah, it was be but to get that old school ECW feeling, I was just hoping that they would have put up the chain link fences with the bricks. And the ECW logo. But, and it, I mean, to get past that, in the back was so tight between hair and makeup. And I don't even know what else was set up. I mean, when I was watching, there was a camera set up behind me. So I don't know if they were filming while we were watching because there was a monitor. There, yeah, there was a monitor where we were sitting because I was sitting with Devon and there was a monitor. And when you walked maybe 20, not even 20 steps, that's where the agent sat and there was like two monitors there and there was some kind of, I don't know, board in front of them or something that they were using for the show because they were doing the show. So that was like right there. But then behind me was like hair and makeup and whatever else. Um, I know it's, once I was done with hair and makeup, they grabbed me to do my vitals. And I had to go in this room. I never even knew it was there. So, I mean, I, I'm assuming like when they broke the walls down, they, this little room popped up and they made me do um, my blood. They took my blood pressure. They put the little gimmick on my finger for my heart rate and my oxygen. And my blood pressure is always 120 over 80. And that day it was not. Um, the bottom number was too high. Then my pulse was at, my thing was at 106, which was high. So the guy's looking at me and he's like, are you nervous? And I was just like, well, right now, no, I'm very relaxed. I said, uh, but I was anxious to come today. Uh, so like I had to be on holding. They had to hold me until everything dropped or else I wouldn't have been able to go out there. And I said, listen, let's just talk a minute. I said, uh. I'm not doing anything really, but sitting in the crowd. I said, are you going to fail me? <laughs> the guy's like, no, we're not going to fail you. He's like, but you need to come down. And I was like, oh, so I sat there for maybe 15 minutes or so. And uh, then he's like, well, you should really go to a doctor and check. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm always perfect. Like this, it must be this environment because I'm fine. Usually like this is, you know, I guess my heart rate was a little elevated. Just, it was just a little overwhelming. You know what I mean? Like I, I didn't know who I was going to meet and what was going to happen and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, once I, and then I just like, after I saw the doctor, I went out and I watched the rehearsals and I got to meet some of the guys that were in charge and all this stuff. And that's where I saw Sean for the second time. And I got to speak to him a little longer. Um, and then they started taking pictures of like me and Steve Carino, me and Rhino, um, anybody that was in the area, we would, they would say, can we get a quick picture? They made me go on the ramp, take a picture, 
like on the ramp, stuff like that. So, um, but to answer your question, I think they just shoved stuff in where there were openings, <laughs> like for all their equipment, because there was stuff right. everywhere. It was everywhere. But the end result, I think, looked beautiful. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. I mean, and thank God they had that expansion of the uh, 2300 arena to give you all those extra fun. rooms. <laughs> it, I was telling the girls, I was like, you have no idea. I said, we had an outhouse practically to go to the bathroom. Um, I said, we never had like a nice bathroom with mirrors because now they're upstairs. There's like the mirrors and because the, mm -hmm. the one toilet got clogged and the oh, girl geez. was like, oh. We got to get somebody to unclog the toilet. And I was like, you're lucky you have a toilet. And they were like, why? And, so I was telling them. <laughs> and they were like, oh, my God, that's terrible. I was like, oh, girl, you don't even know. <laughs> back, back in my day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. I, and I know this is kind of like a, you know, obviously there's going to be a little bit of a difference. But compared to 2006, the advancements in the production. Because in 2006, I mean, WWE still did a lot of stuff on film. So now, obviously, we're in a digital age. Did you see all these different differences in the advancements of the production from, obviously, you know, what, 18 years, almost 17 years ago at this point when you were there? Yeah, I never really paid attention to that. When I was there in 2006, I was, I was like oblivious to everything. I didn't know how anything worked back then. I didn't see... I saw more this past weekend than I did for the six months that I was there, I think. Because I never saw, like, you see Gorilla, right? Mm -hmm. But I never really took the time to, look. like, I went behind and was looking at the equipment. I was looking at the screens just to see. There could have been four monitors even. I don't even know how many monitors, but we had, like, the one. Um, and then there was, um, I don't know if it was, I was sitting at one point next to Fit Finley. I don't know if it was him or somebody else, but when they would go to commercial, our monitor would just turn to black and somebody goes, didn't you pay the bill here at the arena or something? Like that? And everybody, ho, 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 you know, everybody's laughing about it. Um, but I, you know, I never really looked at how it was ran when I was there before. Mm -hmm. I just didn't take the time, but I had so much time on my hands <laughs> on Saturday. I was just wandering around and I happened to look and just at the boards and, um, you know, they were filing people. Like if you watch the show, they took them to different locations around Philly to get those promos that they did. Right. They were doing that throughout the day. Um, and then at one point I saw like all of the um the writers and the agents like i met um uh, i met a bunch of the agents and and then the writers and they were like in a line and i saw them all following each other um there were buses outside so i don't know if some of the talent dressed on the bus i don't know who was on the buses i i, I don't know because we didn't like there was this when you went up the steps they they separate talent females from males and i don't know if it's like a uh because of well i guess they always did it that way like in ecw you can room free like if i needed something i would just knock on the door and walk right in but not one male ever came into the locker room when i was there except for when they were shooting the that promo with the couch that i talked about and they made sure is everybody dressed is everybody okay blah 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 and then they came in um but we never saw i never saw any male talent the whole time I was in the female locker room, I didn't see, they were on the opposite side in their room or they were outside on these buses and everything was like kind of blocked off with arrows, like female town here, male town here, production here, but you know, whatever it said. So I don't know. I was just following signs and <laughs> I was just wandering around trying to occupy my time. We should have given you an editing course while you were there. <laughs> they I would have enjoyed it. I, mean, I, used to, I used to sit and watch Paul edit the show, you know, which was in somebody's house on, you know, minimal equipment, but they, they just had tons of equipment all over the place. And it was interesting to just watch the, the dynamic of uh, the show being put together and 
you know, how they did promos and who was kind of the ringleader of, uh, you know, the, the promos and how, how they gave their verbiage and stuff like that. I just, I'm, I'm intrigued by that kind of stuff. So, um, I thought all the girls did a great job and, and the guys as well. Like uh, a lot of the guys were, um, talking to me in the back and saying they were fans of ECW and, you know, um, it, it was just fun. It was fun to get to know them a little bit and see them work. So you said uh, you had a another question or? Yeah, th this is one that I thought could be an interesting one, maybe thinking outside the box a little bit. One of the things I saw people talking about a lot is NXT obviously being, you know, the new wave of how wrestling is evolving, right? And ECW was always the counterculture of professional wrestling. It was kind of an interesting meet in the middle kind of experiment you know what i mean do you think this is how ecw would have evolved had ecw been around was to be like nxt because you had a little bit of everything and we always talk about this is how ecw kind of was if you look really deep there was a little bit of everything and when you looked at this show you had your legends yes because it was obviously the tribute but then you had some of these guys doing these amazing moves and these high flying spots but then you also had hardcore and you had these you know trash cans and kendo sticks and this yeah. and that so when i saw that as a criticism maybe that oh ecw wasn't like nxt do you think maybe it kind of was if it was around today and had stayed ecw i don't know because with the with the hardcore match in the beginning with the girls i wasn't sure if they were billing that as a hardcore match or hardcore street fight because we were in the ecw arena like, do they do that on NXT a lot with the females? I'm not sure, you know. Plus, we didn't have a women's division. So that right. that's a difference right there. Like, we didn't have that uh, women's wrestling uh, that they do today. Now, if ECW was still around, you have to adapt with the times. So I'm sure Paul or whoever else would be running in in 2024 would have to start using female wrestlers because... I mean, it's the trend right now. They main evented the show. It's hot. You know, people love to see the females work and they're good at what they do. They can hang with the guys. So I think if ECW was still around today, that's the one thing that would be implemented in there would be a female division for wrestling because we just didn't have that back then. Interesting. Yeah, I can obviously see that. I can't imagine ECW made, might put another little spin on it too, in the ECW uh, way. But well, again, business has evolved. So, of course. And the, the unique Maybe. part about this was we, you know, Wednesday, we, we were on Wednesday evening. Uh, NXT is usually on Tuesday. So we were on Wednesday because of the election. They went head to head with AEW and they actually beat AEW in the ratings. So, People are chalking that up to, well, was it the ECW twist that put them over the top? Um, who knows? I don't know. Um, all I do know is that the ECW themed show was victorious yeah. that night. So I, I think a little bit of both. I think it's got to be a little bit of both because I think everybody was used perfectly from ECW. I think that the matches that they put on the card were act executed to the best that they possibly could have been and if i watch and this is not me being a aw hater if i watch an aw show even if it has the mix of the legends it doesn't hold me like the nxt show held me because i think it's that wwe polishing that the show has because even though it's got the nxt branding you're still watching a wwe run production and I think that's the difference maker is if, okay, if I have the choice to watch A or B and A is a WWE production, if you're a longtime fan, I think you're going to go A. But remember this as well. You were on the CW. You were not on Sci-Fi or USA or a cable right. network. Right. Yeah. There's a difference there for sure. Um, but I again, overall, I, I just want to thank WWE. I want to thank WWE NXT. Uh, Shawn Michaels, everybody that was involved, John Coon, Johnny Russo, everybody um, for including me because I, you know, a, I, I've said it before, a lot of these WWE ECW throwbacks, I'm not a part of. And it, this time, 
being called, I was just like, wow, I'm, I was literally surprised I got a phone call because I'm never really included in their vision of ECW. If you look back to everything that they've done, uh, they tend to use the same people over and over again. And I think this time was a little spritz of, of maybe a couple people that you would say, Hey, cause I, everybody in the comments is like, Oh my gosh, haven't seen her in forever. I'm like, well, I'm kind of still around, but I haven't been on TV. <laughs> you know, I haven't been on TV in years. And so to pop up, it was nice. And, um, it was nice to be included is what I'm trying to say. So, um, you know, uh, I didn't think I would be, I didn't ask for it. Um, but I, they contacted me. So that, that was very, very nice and humbling. And I was just happy to be a part of it. And that's all I can say about it. You know, who had my favorite non queen of extreme moment of the night? Of course, it popped best for you. I mean, you were my favorite, right? Uh, of course. Stand out, of course. Sure. You know my my uh, other one was no, Rhino. Rhino. Rhino was all. I mean, that was great. They gave the old school ECW blackout, Lights and off. Robert Stone had the line the of the night when he said, "What is it? They don't pay the bills around here. They, they their electric bill. bill. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they, they, didn't you say that before? Which, is that?" Was that the blackout line you used before? Was that no? The they they no. they also said that in the back when the okay yeah went black. He yeah. said that in the ring in the when ring. they cut the yeah when they cut the lights. Rob uh, when Stone, Rhino came out. Robbie Stone is one of the nicest guys on the planet. I really really enjoy him. Um, he's great. Uh, he, he took that spear oh, like yeah. a champ. Um, well, uh, I enjoyed the spot that I enjoyed the most. I think is when uh, they had Guido up for what did they give him a power bomb they 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 held him up for something and and as they're holding him up he makes the sign of the cross all right see i gotta go back to watch that one it was so fun it just everything was just so fun to watch because i watched the show from the beginning until the end and i thought it was a really well put together show and yeah. i thought it was a great tribute to us as well and um again just really, really happy to be a part of it. Uh, I, I, there's nothing else I can say. It, it was, it was a great day. Did you get to hear the music being played at the beginning? The theme? Like when they were, uh, yeah, when they came and, in from the intro? So yeah, they, they played the intro and uh, I hear the music and I, who did I say? It was it Carino. I said it to somebody and I was like, this might sound corny, but I just got chills and I felt like it was 1996 all over again. And every one of the, our guys was like, oh my God, I'm freaking out. I'm about to cry. I'm getting chills. Like we all felt it. You know That's what I awesome. mean? It was just like yeah. a, in unison. We all kind of looked at each other and we were like, wow, because we're in that building. We're at the ECW arena. You're hearing the music. We know we're going out there. And it's like, what year is this? <laughs> like, ECW will never, ever die. We're never going to die. We might die physically, but that company is never going to die. Ever. And I don't want it to. I don't want it to. Because then, okay, so then after that, I was home for a day. And then I got picked up. And me, the Sandman, Todd, and Tyler went to uh, Long Island, and we did the big event. And in our row, it was all ECW. It was me, Todd, Hack, um, Steve Carino, Jerry Lynn, Shane Douglas. Uh, I saw Kimona there. Um, we were all, Bubba, Devon, we were all in, in, like, the same line, and we were like, this is the ECW line. This is, this is all of us. And we were just there having such a good time and hanging out. And I mean, yeah, which now I feel so bad. Bubba tech, Bubba and I had a conversation and he's just like, sometimes I kind of feel left out and I'm like, why? And he's like, cause you guys take these pictures and I'm never in them. And I totally forgot his table was maybe six tables down and they grabbed us and just started taking pictures. And I should have went and got Bubba. So after I put that up on Twitter, Bubba goes, see, this is what I'm talking about. I was like, oh, my God. I said, from now on, I'm going to grab you and Devon 
for sure because it's so quick. You know what I mean? Like this was we yeah. that group. We were all sitting together uh, and like I've seen it. I've seen how it gets done. Yeah, you know, and and it's yeah. always Moose. It's always Moose because then he jumps in, so he takes it with his camera and then texts everybody this the picture, and then we can do what we want with it. But yeah, Bubba and Devon should have totally been in that picture. But they were down. They were down like six tables from us, and I don't know. They were probably with fans because they're over. And, you know, we were just hanging out. So we all took pictures. <laughs> so, um, but it, again, when I get to do these things and hang out with these guys, and it was so nice because Steve Carino and I reconnected through this and we exchanged phone numbers. And now we're going to try to, you know, meet up for a Disney day. Because I was very close with Steve back in the day. And you kind of lose touch with people. But, you know, now we found each other again. So I said, well... You're not going to get rid of me this time. And he's like, no, it's going to be great. So it's it was nice. It's nice to just reconnect with people. I'm, I'm blessed. I'm so happy to have these guys as my friends and my brothers. And I don't know. I, I can cry just thinking about it. I just I was really happy this week.